Part three of Project 425, our Desmo Sedici restoration slash recommission project. I've been asked to kick off by pretending to be the fat man from Wheeler Dealers and walk into the workshop and wonder what you've been doing, Dan. It doesn't look like you've been doing very much, to be fair. What's going on? Oh, I've done a lot, actually. I've rang Ducati regarding uh, all the recalls. We know that they're all good and they don't need doing anymore. Um, so that's cool, so we can crack on. Um, found out about all the parts that we need, so we've got all the, the relevant stuff like the oils, fuel lines that I want to change anyway. Um, yeah, you know, so we're, we're pretty much good to go now and see if it runs. So we're going to run it today? Yeah, we're going to run it today, yeah. Before we um, strip it, I'd like to hear that it actually runs. So we're going to drain all the old fuel out, um, check the fuel pump, and make sure everything's clean in there, no rust. Um, yeah, fire it up. Then obviously strip it for cleaning, um, for paint and all that kind of stuff, really. So come on in, John. What have you been up to? Well, I genuinely have been busy, mate. Again, in true fat man from Wheeler Dealer style. Yeah, right. I've been doing a little bit of research. Take a look at this. Check it out. Upstairs in the Ducati Museum at the factory in Borgo Panigale. Just trying to work out how many parts I can steal off this for Project 45. Not many. My name is Andrea Forni, I am the technical director in Ducati, of Ducati, sorry. I work in Ducati since uh, 1st of July 1988, so now are 30 years. And uh, I, I saw the, the born, the growth and uh, the development of any Ducati motorcycle since that uh, age up to now, and now I'm working on the, Ducati, on the Ducatis of the future. So. I understand you have uh, Desmo Sedici and uh, you want to recommission it, so I um, try to tell you something about uh, the history of Desmo Sedici. Um, starting from the beginning of the idea uh, uh, that is behind that kind of project, clearly the idea was to build a road and a street legal and motor homologated motorcycle that was as close as possible, as close as possible to a to a real MotoGP. Uh, we started to work uh, on that bike about uh, uh, around, sorry, 2004. So they were really the the first years of the MotoGP era. The MotoGP started in 2002, but Ducati started to race only in 2003. So just uh, one year after, we had the idea to build a replica of the MotoGP. We wanted to uh, maintain the general layout and the basic principle that is behind the race bike as close as possible also on the road bike. So just to give you an example, the engine had the same measure of bore and stroke of the motorbike that at that age was uh, ridden by, by Loris Capirossi. It was 86, bore 86 and stroke 42.5 that are really extreme uh, measures. It is an extreme bore to stroke ratio, so extreme that uh, today the MotoGP do not have the same because it's no more allowed by the, the rules. It was really, in our intention, was really uh, an extreme engine with the capability to uh, have a high power and uh, very high revolution uh, speed and, uh, and uh, we apply the same principle also to the full vehicle so the vehicle has a front trellis frame the same of the original MotoGP bike in Ducati the same principle even uh, was maintained on the motorcycle that in 2007 allowed to Casey Stoner to win the World Championship the engine has uh, a structural function had a structural function so the front frame was linked to the engine and the rear subframe was linked to the engine as well the rear subframe was made by carbon fiber and the, the swing arm and the rear suspension, the leak, uh, were linked directly to the engine. So the, the, the scheme, the layout was the same of the MotoGP that was racing at that uh, time. 
obviously uh, we had the clear in our mind that uh, it was not uh, a really mass production motorcycle because it was uh, it was expensive so the the production number cannot be the usual 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 depends from which kind of motorcycle are you speaking about we wanted to make it in a closed number so we established a maximum of 1,500 and so we have to choose technologies where are, that were and still are the proper technologies for uh, a limited number of motorcycles. So uh, we made all the component of the engine uh, with sand castings. Uh, sand castings is a technology that is good for uh, uh, small production while uh, mass production engines have all the components made with die castings. Coming back to the engine, also inside the engine, the, the layout of the internal components and the principle that was behind the engine was the same of the MotoGP. So the valve train was moved by gears, not by belts or chains like in mass production engines. Dan, just uh, make it look like this, please. There's a good lad. Thanks very much. Cheers. You're taking a f now. I'm, I might be, mate. But more importantly, you said we're going to make this bike run today. So what are we going to do? First things first, um, you're going to put the kettle on. Brilliant. <laughs> Tee up. That's on. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I'm good at this. Right, what are we doing? What are we doing? Right, first of all, we're going to dump the oil out. Yep. Um, we're going to take the air filter out, yep. make sure there's no mice in there, because believe it or not, I've had quite a few bikes um, with mice and all sorts of stuff in the airbox that have been sitting. Um, then we're going to check the fuel tank, um, pull the pump out of it, check that there's no rust in there, yep. that kind of stuff. Just so make mostly sure just kind of uh, visual inspections with you, yeah. casting your experienced eye over everything that's that you're right. at. Just to make it safe you know to, to run up really yep. obviously we're going to throw a new battery in it but we've got a new one over there ready yep. to go uh, turn the key and see what happens really so you we uh prime the oil system or something before we yeah, run it up? we're gonna we'll basically before we put the tank on it we'll just turn it over a few times just to get a bit of oil up the top end because it's probably dry as a bone up there and mm -hmm. um, make sure there's a nice fresh bit of oil before we hit the start button and, and fire up and which jobs are out of that list are you happy for me to do then? None of them. <laughs> Perfect, brilliant. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> now of course. Um, so I do the air filter? Do the air filter. It's only four screws, I'm sure you'll be alright. And then uh, we can have a look in there. See what's in there, yeah? You alright? Sweet, I'm on it. Do you want some tools? Yep. Let's do it. It looks minty in there. It does, yeah. There's definitely uh, nothing in there. Looks all good. Right, we're just going to drop the oil out. You can clearly see in the window that it looks pretty much brand new, so we're just going to drop it out anyway um, and put some fresh stuff in there. So, let's see what he's saying. How you getting on, mate? All right? Yeah, I'm winning, mate. How's your biscuit? Good? I'm busy up here. Just drum that is all over. So really, we just want to see if there's any chunks of metal anywhere. On the end of this sump plug, we've got a little magnet, which is nice and clean. That picks all the old filings up of like the gearbox, all that kind of stuff. That looks mint. So we're happy with that. So I'm going to fit this new oil filter now, I've taken the old one off. Um, nice and rusty. We'll whip that off. When you change a, a filter, it is really a good idea to what we should do. Just get a new bit of oil, a little bit on your finger, and just run it around the rubber because they're dry and it just stops stops it snagging on the engine. Give it a bit of a wipe. Fit the new one on there. While I'm putting that on, John, after you've done that battery, can you just uh, get the torque settings for the sump bolt Yo. and the oil filter as well, please, mate? Right, what we're going to do is torque up the sump bolt. It's very important that you do this. Um, I did ask John to find out, but unfortunately he's, um, well, I don't know, he's not even here. Um, so a lot of bikes vary on specific torque settings, 
but trying to find the information online on this particular bike is a bit of a pain um, and it's probably not the best way to do it. So we've rang Ducati service uh, and they've given us the Pacific Torque setting which is 20 newton meters. Perfect. Did you make sure to prime the uh, O-ring on the oil filter, mate, with a yeah. little bit? Yes, mate, yes. Yes, boss, I have done that. Good. Thank you. Dan, I want a pair of them funky gloves. There might be a set in the bottom drawer, mate, that Flo, my little daughter, wears. That what are you trying to say? Should, should, should fit, man. Sweet. Track on. Right, so that's the oil done. We're just going to put the booster pack on it for now, just to prime it over so we don't drain a brand new battery. We don't want to overheat the starter motor, so we'll just do it in sort of intervals, really. I don't know if you noticed there, if you're looking at the dash, um, the oil light was on. All the while we was cranking it, and now it's gone off. It's reached, it's reached the sensor. So now it's reached the sensor, and it's saying that basically we've got oil pressure there now. So I'm fairly happy with that. So what we do now is that we'll open a petrol tank up and see if we've got any crap in there, basically, yeah? I do feel like the contribution I'm making to this is far greater now that I'm wearing these fancy gloves. Just saying. I'm definitely putting them to use, mate. <laughs> Let's have a little look in here, then. No, that's cool, mate. It's just like a, a resin coat that they've put inside the petrol tank, which is quite a cool thing, actually. Yeah. You don't really see that on anything. Earlier on, I cleaned um, all inside here because there was so much surface corrosion. So um, you just basically want to make sure that nothing drops inside the petrol tank. So let's put some fuel in it and make some noise. Sweet. John, five litres, mate. Get in there. So just a quick checklist, Daniel. Everything that we need to do, or need to have done, we've done. Oil. Yeah, we've done the oil. We've done the plugs. We've primed the engine. Um, Check the air filter, which we're going to replace with a swanky one anyway. Swanky one anyway. Tank's good, pump's good. Yep. Check the water. fresh. No battery. We've checked the water. Again, I'm going to drop the coolant out of it. This is basically just to see if the bike's going to run. Um, so, you know, it's all going to come apart again anyway. So, Dan, I'm guessing we don't stick the thing on the stop, fire it up, and try and bend the valves. Uh, no. Nice. On this particular model it's got a funky little choke that you can see here it's just twisting the throttle a tiny bit isn't it you can see it that's all it does it basically just takes up the slack of the throttle holds it open a certain amount yep um, so that's what you do you ready uh yeah i am mate so the best thing that can happen is it just starts up like a champ and ticks over and we're good. Yep. The worst thing that can happen is it absolutely shits its pants out the front of the motor, yeah? <laughs> we've already primed it, yeah, basically, but we've already primed it with oil. We know that the engine turns over, yep. um, but hopefully it's not gonna rattle its tits off. Sounds awesome. It sounds, uh, yeah, it sounds sweet as. No leaks. No leaks. No clunk. All looking good. No knocking. 
So a little bit of smoke on startup, Dan. What's that all about? It purely well, I've just um, drained your been oil disconnecting and, and connecting stuff. Yeah, just drain your oil and filter on it. A little bit of oil and exhaust. I did actually wipe that, um, but it's just burning off a little bit of residue there. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, mate. Happy days. When when we um, I just want to point out when we finally put this bike back together, we will balance the throttle bodies. Get it just to make sure that yeah, everything's yeah. actually. But at least now we spotting. know. We, we, now. We, we know that we need to take the swinging arm out. We're taking the suspension out. We're going to have this bike apart. Yeah. There's still lots to do with it, but we at least know that the motor's not hanging its guts out and, no. it, and it's all good. That's it. Yeah. That's sweet. I think we might have earned a pot noodle, mate. So it runs a beaut, Dan, and I've. I don't want to say that we've dodged a bullet, but we we did everything as we were supposed to do it, and the result was exactly what we could have hoped for. Yeah, definitely. The engine sounds good. Um, no leaks. Happy days, really. Yeah, but it doesn't. You know, it's certainly not the end of the road. There's still a, sh a shed load of work for us to do. I know that we're talking about uh, doing the valve clearances on the motor. Yeah. Having this swing arm out and having it powder coated and, and freshened up. There's a load of work to do with the suspension. We're a long way from done. Hell of a long way. That's I suppose we can at least. There's loads to do. It's mainly just to check that it ran. It, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so that the, literally we've got so much to do now in right. terms of stripping, cleaning, painting. You know, there, there's loads. And you've been moaning about maybe wanting to get out of the workshop a little bit. Yeah, we need to go somewhere. All right. Well, I'm working on that. Well, there should be more on that to come. But in the meantime, mate, cheers. Thanks for today. Cheers, mate. Well done. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show and I look forward to showing you what happens in the next instalment of Project 425.